I don't remember a time when I didn't know I was adopted, but my mother always said, you were chosen. It wasn't just that she told me she loved me, she showed me. My mom put my sister in dance and I just kind of followed. And then that evolved into gymnastics. And then we had a pool built in our backyard and I was trying my gymnastics stunts up the diving board at home. My mother didn't want me to kill myself, so she got me lessons. All that energy that was dispersed amongst all these different disciplines was focused into one. And so then I was 12, a year later, I was world champion for my age group. And then three years after that, I was on my first Olympic team. At that time, I was diving with Dr. Sammy Lee. In 76, Klaus DiBiase from Italy was going for his third Olympic gold medal. It was all about beating Klaus. My only purpose on this earth was to prevent Klaus from winning that gold medal. I missed my ninth dive. Dr. Lee just started yelling and screaming at me, telling me how worthless I was. I went to the Olympics to win. I did not go there to take second. And that's what the message that I got from my coach who I was training with. I felt like I'd let the world down. I felt so off balance. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know what to feel and I got depressed. I had this thought that you know, the world would be better off without me, and it, maybe it would, would have been better had I not existed. I had several suicide attempts at you know, different stages in my life, you know, just battled with chronic depression. Ron got me. He understood. He understood that I was an individual. I thought about things differently and treated me as a whole person. I was like poised to do really well at the 1980 Olympic Games. My thought as an athlete at that time was, oh, they can't take the Olympics away from us. The decision has been made. The American people are convinced that we should not go to the Summer Olympics. The Congress has voted overwhelmingly that we will not go. You know, I had been in the 76 Olympic Games, but then I had to wait eight years. And so by the time I got to the 84 Olympic Games, it was expected that I would win. I remember getting to my inward three and a half, which was probably my eighth dive. That was kind of a key dive for me. Okay, if I hit this, I'm on world record pace. And Ron, you know, kept me in a really good headspace. When I do a dive, you know, he just, you know, hand me my chamois and say, just keep dancing. And so I did my inward three and a half. I think I got eight and a half nines. And I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm on world record pace. And that was just a dream come true competition for me. Presentation ceremonies for the 10 meter platform diving competition. Greg Luganis, of course, has already been presented with the gold and Bruce Kimball with the silver. I had an ear infection going on, and so I uh, went to see the doctors. The doctor happened to be my cousin, and uh, you know he was treating me for the ear infection. And I just, HIV, AIDS, there was a lot of talk, and um, it was a concern. So I said, you know what, I'd, I'd like to do an HIV test anonymously. It was an important year, it was an Olympic year, and I wanted to make sure that I was in good health. And so when my cousin came to me and said, <clears throat> you're HIV positive, this is 88, and we thought of HIV as a death sentence. And he asked me what I wanted to do. 
I said, I don't know what to do. And he said, you know, the healthiest thing for you would be to continue training. We don't know when you were exposed to HIV. You don't know how long you've been living with this. You've been training so hard, and that's probably the healthiest thing that you could do for yourself. Ron knew something was up, something was going on with me. And so he said, what's going on? He sat me down, what's going on? And I said, Ron, I was diagnosed HIV positive. And then I just started sobbing. And he came around and he helped me. And he said, we'll get through this together. going to be close. I thought I was well past the board, and then all of a sudden I hear this big hollow thud. In the ninth round of the preliminaries, Greg Luganis had an accident. And he hit his head coming past the board. But then he came right to the surface and came out of the pool. And so my first feeling was I was embarrassed. You know, I just held my head and I was concerned about blood, you know, because I was HIV positive. And so Ron said, you're in fifth place. What do you want to do? It was a knee jerk reaction. I said, Ron, we've worked too long and hard to get here and I don't want to give up without a fight. I said, okay. They announced my dive, Craig Luganis, United States of America, reverse one and a half with three and a half twists. And I heard an audible gasp from the audience. And then I thought to myself, you know what, this is the Olympic Games, you can't hold back. So then I did my reverse one and a half, three and a half twists. And as it turned out, it was the highest scoring dive of the Olympics. It was right after the 1984 Olympic Games, and I was in Honolulu. My host for the event said, um, Greg, your father's here. I said, my father's not here. He would have told me if he was coming to Hawaii. He said, no, 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 your biological father. I met this man, and it was very emotional for him. My biological father wanted to raise me, so he wanted to keep me. But because my mother was only 16, he didn't have any say. I was cautious. But through the years, I would go back to Hawaii for various engagements, events, and that sort of thing. He was always there and would always see me off at the airport, load me up with pineapples and chocolate cover macadamia nuts and everything from the island. And he never asked for anything. I heard that there was going to be a Lu Tu family reunion the following year. And so I had a chance to talk to my half-brother. I said, Malcolm, do you think it'd be okay if I came to the, to the reunion? He said, oh my God, Greg, that'd be so awesome because now we could talk about you. Because out of respect, they didn't talk a whole lot about me. It was the 76 Olympic Games. He heard this story about this young boy in diving who was of Samoan descent. And I was 16, put the pieces together, and then he saw me on TV. And he said, oh my God, there's my boy. I look at my own experience with adoption as a journey because I feel like I'm 
continuing to learn. I never would have had the opportunities that I had had I not been adopted. And I know that and I realize it and I appreciate it. It really has been truly amazing. Gregor Ganis, and I am that kid.